October 10th, and here in Texas, we're still wearing shorts and running the AC. It was 91 today at both Austin and Houston, DFW 86, with a bit of cool northeast flow. La Nina has still not arrived. At last check, we're still on a La Nina watch with a 71% chance of that pattern developing before New Year's Day. Around the country this evening, we are seeing some signs of fall, mostly on the west coast where we have much cooler weather in place, and also in the north central U.S., cool 60s and even a few 50s coming down out of the Canadian prairies. Down to the south, though, still a tropical air mass in place from Texas all the way up towards Kentucky, although much drier as you go north, and down in Florida, a very disturbed area of weather, a frontal wave around Miami with considerable precipitation back towards North Carolina. In the southwest, we have a major influx of subtropical moisture. A lot of that moisture is the remnants of Hurricane Priscilla, which moved up the Mexican coast earlier this week, and now we've got considerable showers thunderstorms all the way from Yuma up through Phoenix, the Four Corners, and into Colorado. The 500 millibar chart does show a low zonal index pattern troughing on the west coast and ridging through the central U.S., this area of the country rather warm. More troughing across the Great Lakes into the southeastern U.S. and the main belt of the polar front jet well up to the north in Canada with a split flow pattern the southern stream running about like that. Tropical Storm Jerry moving northwest past Puerto Rico. Barely see a closed contour on that. The central pressure is 1006 millibars. It is moving north and will remain about 200 miles east of Bermuda. Also, we briefly had Karen today. Karen was a subtropical storm. It is now a post-tropical cyclone. That is going to be out of the picture. That means our next storm is going to be Lorenzo. So when is Lorenzo coming? Well, we see Tropical Storm Jerry heading northward, and it begins wandering around out there just east of Bermuda. We have rapid development of this next system towards Tuesday and Wednesday. That is going to be extra tropical, but quite deep. We'll have to check out the charts on that on Monday because the model could be overdoing that. But as far as the tropics go, just a couple of weak waves, none of them show any development. So I think we're looking at a rather quiet pattern over the next week or two. In the northeastern U.S., we have this vortex moving through the northern Great Lakes. The center of the circulation appears to be around Sault Ste. Marie. And if we go over to that moisture channel, we get a little bit better idea of the structure. So, obviously, some strong dynamics taking place right there around Sault Ste. Marie. The main Bear Clinic cloud shield extending to the south. We do have a weak frontal system through Michigan into Ohio and Indiana. For tonight, however, much of the rest of the northeastern U.S. under clear skies, we do have a frost advisory for the higher mountains of New York, New England, and Maine. Tonight, temperatures will reach the lower 30s. Going into Sunday, we have a high wind watch from coastal Delaware up to New Jersey, over to Long Island, Block Island, and Nantucket. We're expecting northeast winds of 35 gusting to 60 miles an hour along the coast, and that could bring scattered power outages as those tree limbs from summer growth come down. And we do have coastal flood advisories all the way up to Boston, over the weekend into Monday, some areas on the beaches will be inundated. So what's causing all this? Well, as we mentioned, a stormy pattern, a bear clinic weather system out there near Miami, and that will begin developing and moving up the coast over the weekend. The water vapor channel does show a definite bear clinic structure. There it is. That's your classic bear clinic leaf. So, yeah, this is not just your garden variety area of showers and thunderstorms like what we saw over the summer. 
and back behind it, yeah, a little bit of dry incursion into the central Gulf area. The 500 millibar analysis shows that upper level low across Georgia, a bit of cold core convection across the central part of the state, and back to the west, there's that area of subsidence all the way down towards the Tampa area. Across Texas, hot weather, as we mentioned, although the flow is turning a little bit to the northeast across parts of the state. So some cooler air coming down, and we could see a few 50s across northeast Texas into Oklahoma. Across the northern plains, we're on the backside of that vortex out there in the Great Lakes. So basically, subsonant flow across the uh, north central U.S. As we go to the west, we pick up some of that moisture field from the tropics. That's that long flow from western Mexico into Arizona and crossing the Rockies into Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Looking at Mexico, the center of the circulation on Priscilla, located about right there, Priscilla had 35 mile an hour winds, 1004 millibar pressure, and that was moving north at six miles an hour. Again, that's a very weak storm, but down to the south, this stuff right here, that is Tropical Storm Raymond, west of Puerto Vallarta. It's forecast to track up the Gulf of California this weekend. It will bring heavy rain, six to eight inches in southern Sonora and push even more moisture into Arizona and New Mexico for the start of the week. Abundant moisture across Arizona into the Four Corners, western Colorado, and we have uh, flood watches all across Arizona, extending into southern Utah, western Colorado. The water vapor imagery does bear that out. So it is sparing southern California and the western Mojave Desert. But as you go into Arizona and Mexico, Four Corners, abundant precipitation. Let's take a look at the composite radar. And this gives us a better idea where that rain is falling. Looks like uh, Tucson, Safford, all that area is spared. But north of the Mogollon Rim into Flagstaff, back into Blythe and Needles, quite a bit of precip. And we have a new Pacific system moving into California. Typical anafront set up and quite a bit of precip in northwestern California. There it is. Heavy rains from the Shasta area to Eureka, Arcata, and maybe all the way down to Fort Bragg. And quite stormy through the Pacific Northwest as well. An occlusion all the way back into the Pacific. And this is going to have effects as it tracks inland. We do have winter storm warnings in the Lewis Range right in here. For Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday morning, we'll see about three inches of snow in the valleys, up to a foot in the mountains and passes. Some of the peaks will get almost three feet of snow. Winter storm watches and winter weather advisories cover most of the western part of the state above 5,500 feet late this weekend. Interstate 90 may see some problems, but so far, Interstate 80 down to the south is looking okay. And as we go into Monday and Tuesday, the Sierras, they are under a winter storm watch. I think that is our first one of the season. Above 6,500 feet, most of the uh, more vulnerable areas will get one to two feet of snow. So again, we're talking about the middle of next week, and we'll look at that on the charts a little bit later. And we head out into the Pacific. There's that Pacific front right there. The occlusion off the Oregon and Washington coast. High pressure across the Gulf of Alaska. The Bering Sea quite stormy with this next occlusion. The Alaskan interior, cold. 20s on the north slope with 30s in the interior and 40s along the south coast. A few 50s on the Kenai Peninsula. In the Canadian high Arctic, we are starting to see those temperatures dropping. Now we have single digits at Resolute, 14 at Rhea Point, 21 at uh, Saks Harbor, and 34 at Cambridge Bay, 32 at Thule. So some areas rather cold, but others are probably about where they should be at this time of year. Very temperamental, windy conditions through the Iglulik area. One of these stations here is Iglulik. 
They are under wind warnings for today. It winds up to 55 miles an hour. And we do have a storm surge warning for Iqaluit for the remainder of this afternoon due to high tides and strong winds. But I think the winds are starting to turn around to the northwest at this time. Down south, snowfall warnings are in effect this weekend from Canmore to Jasper in the Canadian Rockies. Up to eight inches of snow expected. And we do have special weather statements for snow, heavy, wet snowfall in the foothills. Basically, this area from about Cardston to Fort McLeod, Hinton, Grand Cache. Looking for about three to five inches of that heavy, wet snow. Nothing at this time for Calgary or Edmonton. And out east, not much going on, but due to the influence of that cold dry high pressure area. We have frost advisories across the Montreal, Quebec City area down towards the New England border. So let us look at that forecast through tonight and into tomorrow. There's that low pressure area coming together off of the South Carolina coast tomorrow morning that will be tracking up towards the northeast. This Pacific system continues moving inland into the Great Basin area and Arizona. So by Saturday and Sunday, looking like this, two major weather systems, one out there coming off of the Northern Rockies, the other advancing on New York City and the Northeast Corridor. So by Sunday, you can see those winds picking up right there, 50 knots, just south of Rhode Island. So some pretty strong pressure gradients right in here. More moisture heading north. This is the remnants uh, and in Montana and Saskatchewan. Some very blustery snow coming down through the day on Sunday. And this could approach blizzard conditions. You can see those sustained winds, 35 knots. So that will certainly be reducing visibilities. The moisture continues to come north through El Paso on Sunday, starting to shift eastward into West Texas for Monday. And that links up with that frontal system right there. Now we're looking at two weather systems on each coast. There's that one right there off of New York and the other one, a reinforcing push of cold air coming into Nevada and California. And this is gonna be associated with that winter storm warning can see the snow breaking out out there and definite convective indications around Bakersfield into the southern Sierras. So that will advance into Nevada and Utah for midweek. Things improving on the east coast for midweek. And then we're dealing with a southern system here for Thursday and Friday. Not really sure we're going to have enough instability for severe weather. That scenario for this weekend, that did not really pan out, so we can assume it's going to be much the same for the following weekend. So there goes our weather system into the northeastern U.S. Very lackluster push southward of this front for the weekend. And then another west coast system advancing into California, Nevada, and Oregon. And we'll check out those metrics. There's the high temperatures for today. Quite hot there in Texas, all the way up to Kansas. For tomorrow, much the same. However, colder air filtering into the Pacific Northwest. 90s for the Southwest deserts. For Sunday, very cold up there in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Lots of 30s for high temperatures and even colder in the mountains. These are city temperatures, so that's going to be Great Falls. 33, I think that's going to be Hover or Cutbank. Yeah, cut bank right there, long Interstate 15. Much the same for Monday, 33 up there at cut bank, and lots of 30s and 40s through Montana. Hot weather continues on the south, so this cold air basically is shunting eastward. There it goes for Tuesday, sticking to the northern tier states. Meanwhile, the broiler continues for the south, and much the same for Thursday. Low temperatures looking like this, low 60s and even a few 50s in parts of the south, but uh, it is still a little bit on the warm side for this time of year. 60s advancing for overnight lows for 
Saturday night all the way into the Great Plains with that low-level jet. However, out to the west, very cold temperatures into the teens and 20s throughout the northern Rockies. And, of course, that heads eastward also. Here's the probability of precipitation. Yeah, quite a bit of it there through the southwestern U.S. and on the northwest coast. And that continues through the weekend. And it looks like that precipitation pretty much gets locked in right there in New Mexico and Arizona. Not much progress into Texas. Precip chances go back up for Tuesday. Some of that will be snow. I'm going to have to start producing some snow graphics. Hopefully, I'll get that done. But all that stuff will move mostly to the northeast for Wednesday night and Thursday. And that will do it for this episode of Forecast Lab. I will be back for the supporter stream, the supporter video on Monday. That might run a little bit late because I've got kind of a full plate on Monday, but the program will eventually be out maybe after dark sometime. So we'll see about that. Again, yeah, uh, any support. Uh, if you don't want to use Patreon, head to weathergraphics.com. That's just as good. And I do have numerous forecast book titles out. And of course, I was a military forecaster and I'm conveying all that wisdom and all those techniques that I learned over the years and putting them in those books so a lot of very useful information there all right hope you have a great weekend take care and we'll see you back here next week bye-bye